Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing best time to buy and sell a stock. We're given an array prices where every price in this array is the price of a given stock on the i-th day. So in this case, if the index is i, then this is considered the stock's price at the i-th day. And we want to maximize our profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. And we have to return the maximum profit we can achieve from the transaction. If we cannot achieve any profit, then we return zero. So for example, in this case, the biggest profit that we can get is if we buy the stock at price one and sell it at price six. So no notice that if you buy on day two and selling on day one, you can't do that because I mean, <laughs> is chronologic is chronologically like in sequence so it can't be that you go back in time and <laughs> sell the stock at a higher price so in this case we can't do that for the second example we have 76431 in this case we have a profit of zero because no transaction is done to buy or sell a stock here for example if you buy the stock at the first day and you buy it for $7. In this case, there are no subsequent numbers that are actually low, that are actually higher than it. So in this case, you can't sell that stock for a profit in this case. And that's the same for all subsequent days because there's no other days after it where the price of the stock is higher than itself. So that's pretty much it. So in this case, the length of this list of prices ranges from 1 to 10 to the power of 5 and every single price inside this array will range from 0 to 10 to the power of 4. So in this case, every item inside prices would be at least 0. There's no such, I mean, makes sense. There's no such thing as negative prices. So one way we can go about this is to do a linear scan across prices and we will keep track of the minimum price thus far. And we can calculate the current maximum profit to be zero. And we will just set the current maximum profit to be the max of, it, of itself or the current price minus the minimum price available. So that was quite a mouthful, but let's quickly code it out in a bit. So in this case, the expected profit is five. So the first step would be to define a variable to keep track of the minimum price possible. So let's call this minimum price. And let's set this to a very high number at the start. So let this minimum price be 10 to the power of 4. Because the highest number that it can be is 10 to the power of 4. So afterwards, we will do for price in prices. We're doing a linear scan. Let's also initialize max profit. Let's set this to zero for now. So for every price in prices, let's try to calculate the pot, the, pot, the highest profit. The highest prof possible profit in this case would be the price subtracted by, minimum, by the minimum price. And before we do that, we will also update the minimum price to be equals to the min of price and itself. So in this case, after we get the highest possible profit, we will update the max profit by taking the max of itself and the highest profit over here. So afterwards, we will just return the maximum profit like this. So we are pretty much doing a linear scan across prices. We keep track of the minimum price possible and we calculate the current profit that we can get by taking the current price and subtract that by the minimum price. And by any chance, if this number is more, this current profit that we can get is more than the maximum profit, we will set that current profit to be the maximum profit. So that's pretty much the approach. So let's try tracing this out with this test case over here. So min price will be equals to 10 to the power of 4. Max profit will be equals to 0. Price will be set to the first element in prices, so this is 7. And the minimum price in this case will be the min of 7 and 10 to the power of 4. So in this case, this evaluates to 7. So we will set minimum price to 7 instead. So next, we will move on to highest profit. 
in this case, this will be equals to 7 minus mean price, so 7 minus 7. This evaluates to 0. And the max of the max of itself, the maximum profit, which is 0, and in this case, the highest profit is 0 as well, so this will evaluate to 0. So maximum profit remains unchanged. Let's move on to the next item, price 1. So minimum price would be now the minimum of 1. And the mean price in this case is 7. So this evaluates to 7. So we, sorry, uh, sorry. This will evaluate to 1. So mean price will be 1. Next, we will set the highest price. Sorry, the highest profit. And in this case, the price is 1. So 1 minus mean price. So this gives us 0. So highest profit is currently equals to zero. Max profit will be max of itself. Currently the maximum profit is zero and the highest profit is zero. So max profit still remains as zero. Now we move on and we are looking at price equals to five right now. So the minimum price in this case will now be equals to the min of, will now be equals to the min of itself which is 1 and the price in this case is 5 so the minimum of 5 and 1 will give us 1 so this remains sorry this yeah this remains unchanged at 1 highest profit will be equals to 5 minus 1 so this gives us 4 and in this case the max profit will be the max of max profit which is 0 and the highest profit which is 4 so this evaluates to 4 and max profit will be updated with 4. Now we will continue 3 and the mean price in this case will be the minimum of 3 and 1. So this gives us 1. This remains unchanged and the highest profit in this case will be equals to 3 minus mean price. So this is 3 minus 1 giving us 2. So in this case the highest profit will be 2. So the max of max profit in this case is uh, 4 and the highest profit in this case is 2. This will give us 4. So our max profit remains unchanged at 4. Let's move on to 6. Now the minimum price will be 6 and minimum price in this case is 1. So main price still remains at 1. Highest profit will be equals to 6 minus 1 giving us 5. And now the maximum profit will be equals to itself and the highest profit, which is 5, giving us 5. Now we will update maximum profit to 5. Now finally, we are at the final item in prices, which is 4. Now the minimum price will be equals to 4 and 1. So main price remains at 1. Highest profit will be 4 minus 1. So in this case, this gives us 3. And the maximum profit in this case would be 5 and 3. So max profit remains unchanged at 5. At this point, we will return max profit equals to 5. And that corresponds with the answer that is expected. So that's pretty much it. Let's code this out. So in this case, we will define the minimum price. This will be 10 to the power of 4. And this is the current max profit that we have from buying and selling stocks. Now to get the maximum profit, we will iterate the price from left to right doing a linear scan to update our current minimum price. So we will update our minimum price by taking the mean of price and itself. And we will proceed to calculate the highest profit that we can get thus far. The highest profit will just be the difference between the current price and the minimum price. And using this highest profit, we will update our maximum profit. So maximum profit will just be the max of itself as well as the highest profit that we get at this point of time. And we will return the maximum profit like this. So that's pretty much it for this approach. Let's quickly check the implementation again. Minimum price is 10 to the power of 4. That corresponds with the highest price for each item. Max profit in this case is initialized as 0, which makes sense. That means no transactions was made. We are iterating through prices from left to right. We calculate the minimum price that we have at the moment. We update it with whatever that is the minimum. 
and we calculate the highest profit by taking the difference between the current price and the current minimum price and finally we take the max of itself or the current profit that we have at each step and at this point we get the maximum profit looks great let's run this against our sample test cases this passes and let's submit this so this works in this case the space com sorry the time complexity is if we have n to be the length of prices then the time complexity in this case will be o n and that's because on line 15 we are doing a linear iteration across prices from left to right so if you increase the number of prices inside your array then this will scale linearly as well the runtime or computations required on line 15 to line 18 will scale linearly as well for space complexity as we can see all of our variables are integers that are consistently overwritten they use constant space regardless of the length of prices so space complexity in this case is 01 and that's pretty much it for this question if you find this useful please give us a like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video